This episode of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live is brought to you in part by Viewfinders Identity Search and Design. Your choice for web design, graphic design, and all multimedia development needs. Visit VFISAD.com and let us bring your vision to reality. This is Charlotte Chung and Fred Tatashore. And you're listening to ACMG Presents Talk Time, Time Live. Live. This week, gamers welcome the PS5 and Xbox Series X into our homes. Wrestling fans finally get the news we have been waiting for involving AEW. Then, in our final stage review, I enter the Spider-Verse as I review Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and we gotta talk about the major message in this game that matters. All this and more as ACMG presents Talk Time Live Extra. Select Start. Welcome to the show that gives you all the news, views, and opinions in the world of gaming. This is ACMG Presents Talk Time Live Extras. So let's start with your host, Xavier Josiah. Power up and game on. and welcome back to another episode of select start i am your host xavier josiah folks we got a lot of explosive news to talk about this week but in our final stage review i decided to change the whole entire thing once again it was supposed to be no more heroes but damn it i got a chance to play spider-man miles morales and i got a chance to complete it in one day might add I was heavy on it. Like, don't think that it's a short game. I was on it consistently for hours on end. The first, when it when it unlocked in like 12 at midnight, I was on it till like 3 a.m. in the morning. So I had three hours in already. And then I woke up early in the morning and started gaming again and getting to play. And I just got sucked into it. So I think I finished it sometime in the evening. So it was like less than, a little less than 24 hours of play. I got to play this game and that's just the same amount of time people do and read a book. So shut up, (laughs) but I digress. There's a lot to talk about in this game and why this game may be the most important game of the year. Uh, It's not only considered their flag, you know, PlayStation's flagship title, but there's a lot of things that is talking about. They made a statement with this game. Uh, Insomniac Games, Marvel and PlayStation included. This was if you don't understand where their target audience went with this game then i can't i don't know what to tell you but we'll talk about that in our final stage review i can't i'm so looking forward to talking about that in deep and um just so much to talk about and why i am so inspired and empowered after playing that game so we'll talk about that but we got some news to talk about folks um (laughs) uh you know first of all congratulations to everybody the first wave of people and not only our ACMG Facebook group, but just everybody who's listening right now who got a chance to get a Xbox Series X or I forgot the other one that they, they have out, the, the, the lesser version, or even the PlayStation 5, of course. You know, Xbox Series X came out November 10th. PlayStation 5 came out two days later on the 12th, uh, which was the same day that Spider-Man Miles and Morales came out, which is, yes, in fact, their flagship title. Uh, and... You know, I've heard great things about both. I've heard, I actually got, I've read reviews that was more on the side, leaning on the side of PlayStation being the better system, but also Xbox being, as far as processing speed, being the fastest of the bunch. So, I mean, there's something to like to both of them. Again, it's, it's, you know, to each its own in that case, but nonetheless, with everything that is going on this year, you know, and especially, and, and especially to those who fought hard this year to, you know, make change in this world and voted or whatever like that, you damn sure deserve to play this game. So in honor of all of those people who voted, if you got a PlayStation, if uh, if you got an Xbox, you know, enjoy that to the fullest. And I don't say it again. If you didn't vote, you didn't do anything to fight this year and all this was going on. I hope your damn systems overheat. Enough said. But the responses uh you know we gotten from both has been great um i've read some reviews on these and some of them like i said more than leaning towards uh playstation but some of them are also balanced on both ign 
scored it uh, both Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 as an 8. Uh, even Game Informer gave the PS5 an A minus, while um, Xbox Series X got a B plus. And GameSpot is kind of in the even with both of them as well. So, uh, two great systems uh, indeed. Got some great. It all comes to it. Just all going to come down to who has the better games. And I, I, I'm sorry if I played what I played in Spider Man uh, Miles Morales is an indication of what we're about to get in the uh, PlayStation 5. I feel bad for for um, Xbox owners who are Marvel fans because they will not have the chance to play this. You will have to get both systems. Um, I implore everybody to play the game. <laughs> and I'm telling you, man, it, 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 it's just so much. I mean, I knew it's like Cyberpunk's out too. And, and I, just, I, I literally just talked to somebody um, this morning. My man Jay on the ACMG Facebook group. Shout out to Jay Dixon out there. Who, you know, he was jokingly saying that he, um, you know, he was he's uh, definitely going to get the PS5 when he can. But he's going to hate on p- uh, people who got it right now. And honestly, I knew he was joking. But honestly, there are some people who are not joking. There are some people who are actually going to hate on people who got theirs first. And I've been I went through this before with the PS4. Eventually, here's the re- here's the deal. You're going to get the game system. When you really think about it in its in in its totality, there is no reason to be sad that you got it first because you're not missing out on anything when you get it. You're gonna eventually get the same games that they have. I think the I think it's the matter of just being a part of the experience. And when you really look at it, the experience is not that big of a deal because once you get it, which should probably be like a month, a couple weeks, or a month away prior to everybody else. You're gonna be able to experience the same things that everybody else. I, I, I haven't. I, I missed out on watching Breaking Bad when it first premiered. When I finally became a late bloomer and watched that series, and everybody's you know dominant, you know dominant like, or proclaiming it as the greatest show of all time. After watching it, I, I got the same ex- feelings that everybody, especially when I decided not to uh, to make, like to warn everybody not to spoil anything about this show to me. Um, and this is when Netflix was airing it, you know, and they had the rights to have like the first half of the seasons of it. And then I had to wait for the other half and I was fiending for it <laughs> because I was so in, in, emerged and in, engulfed in this series. But it was like better late than ever. I ended up watching it. I It's been years now. I can finally say I've actually watched the series. I enjoyed the series. But in any by any stretch did I care about being the first or being a part of the series. It's like, you know, I checked it out when I wanted to check it out. And it's not that it's not for the lack of trying people. We actually tried to get it. But we you know, there was that stupid leak situation and everybody started selling their you um their uh their units early and stuff. So it's not that big of a deal. You'll eventually get it and it won't be even a factor. You'll forget all about this whole everybody being first and all the stuff because it is the same thing happened with all the systems prior to this the playstation 4 3 xbox you know 360 all well, well maybe not that because they never their sales were never that good but it, nintendo wii's you know nintendo switches to that matter i mean it happens all the time you stop thinking stop stressing about being the first just stress about being <laughs> you know it that's that's what matters is like it doesn't matter how long it takes you to get it as long as you get it we need to think broadly and more maturely to situations like this and you know i don't have it right now and that's a fact you know i eventually i will get it i, I don't think i'm gonna get it during blacks uh black friday because and, and this is gonna be inter- black friday is gonna be really interesting because of the factor of covid you know how wild that is, that usually gets and it'll be interesting to see how this works with COVID restrictions now and now that i'm sure a lot of you know that there are now you know restrictions further restrictions going on with it because people don't know how to do things right and people don't know how to listen to directions or believe science we now have a bigger pandemic number than we ever had before in the millions and that is going to play a factor in black friday i guarantee you but i still believe black friday may be still a crazy day for people so if i can't get it before black friday and i don't care about any sales 
I, I hate Black Friday. I hate the name Black Friday for a lot of reasons, but I also hate Black Friday because of the way people conduct themselves. The stuff that happens. It's not it's really not that serious. I don't mind paying full price for something if it means I can enjoy it without any worries, without my life being threatened or whatever like that. That's it's just ridiculous. I don't want to have to go into a battle royal to the death to get to get a uh, an item or a product. That's ridiculous. So I'm a patient person. I can hold off. It's not that big of a deal. If I got to defend myself, let it be for some something worth more worthwhile. You know, I, I refuse to press the uh, the emergency button that's going to allow me to go blitz on everybody because <laughs> I've done that before and it didn't it, it didn't go well in the sense of um I you know I I ended up in some you know let's just say cause and effect <laughs> of my of my actions you know resulted in things that I rather not even do again so it's just not worth it you know I, you know in, in case of emergency break glass but it's like this is not one of those type of situations that i'm gonna you know do i'm not gonna go blitz on it you know so i'll wait if it doesn't come by before black friday i'm gonna wait till after friday uh black friday and do and go with that because it's just I, the whole rush and the thing and it is covid is gonna play a factor i i just wish i hope that, and I know it's not going to happen. I wish that these uh, these companies, the Walmarts, the uh, Best Buys and all this stuff, I wish they wouldn't play it with people right now because it, it's too dangerous out here. People are going to act crazy. It, they're going to put their staff in danger, you know, if they if they start doing crazy things like this. So ah, we will see, man. We will see. But congratulations to you guys. Nonetheless, enjoy. I will see you soon. I will be hanging with you guys soon on that level. So, uh, I, the biggest news of the week outside of the new consoles coming for wrestling fans is that AEW Games announced their with their game initiative, if you will. Um, love the way they did this presentation that was created to be a parody of an Apple presentation complete with Steve Jobs glasses, V-neck sweaters, and jeans being worn by Kenny Omega, referee Aubrey Davis, Britt Baker, Dr. Britt Baker, <laughs> and Cody Rhodes, who are all a part of the development of the new game. Cody, not so much, I believe. He just wanted to be a part of it regardless. He has no, he's not a gamer. He has no skills or whatever. He just wanted to be a part of it. I thought it the way he did it was fun. The, the, the crazy part for me, was how they dragged it and i because i've been anticipating i'm a wrestling gamer like a lot of people in the, in the wrestling industry um and we have not had a great wrestling game or even close to a great wrestling game probably the, the closest thing we had was wwe 2k 19 which was yuke's last really good game and it was the game that really proved that like they did they can do a great job with their engine and their engine is the best that we have right now and as much as people try to talk crap on social media about ukes ukes is actually a really they've grown exponentially if you look back at you know when they started with power move or power move uh, i believe the name of that game was which was i believe uh all japan pro wrestling game that they started with way back they've come a an insanely long way They've come a very, very long way um, with their engine. And they even tried to emulate the Aki engine, but really couldn't. And they couldn't do it in a way because it would be like sort of infringing on that a copyright or trademark pat uh, patent. You know, lawsuit could come in if they try to do it exactly. But, you know, the one thing that wrestling fans miss was the Aki engine. The Aki engine was the perfect, perfect, perfect engine needed to create a great wrestling simulation and since aki fallen or, or defunct if you will and in came since sophia which was the company that was formerly known as aki engine uh, or aki corporation um we just haven't seen it we've gotten we had to settle with ukes but in, in the ukes credit what they did right with while well, their game engine wasn't as solid as aki their creative suite is phenomenal and how can we combine the two together well kenny omega aew has figured it out because kenny omega is in fact a huge huge wrestling gamer 
He's a fan of the games of No Mercy. He's a fan of the games of Virtual All Pro Wrestling, which if you're a really, really hardcore wrestling gamer like I am, you go as far and wide and you know I'm 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 big on imports. Virtual All Pro Wrestling for the Nintendo 64, one and two. There were two of them. Were fantastic. I mean, at, better than No Mercy. People say No Mercy is the greatest game. That's because they haven't played Virtual All Pro Wrestling. And Virtual All Pro Wrestling was the Japanese equivalent. I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Virtual All Pro Wrestling 2 was the Japanese equivalent of No Mercy. It was the same exact engine, but they used that engine to use it for all japan new japan fmw uh even mixed martial arts pride was in there uh pancraze was in there you know you had mixed martial arts and you had um pro wrestling in there and they managed to you know hybrid have, make it as a hybrid game that had all just regular combat you know fighting in general the only thing was missing was boxing and kickboxing if you will in there but mixed martial arts was in there and they were able to do a it's phenomenal like people say no mercy's the best no i disagree i for america yeah it was the best game ever in america but overall no virtual pro wrestling 2 was the legit because of the extra added to uh deals with it it had everything everything no mercy had except for story story uh narrative and direction the no mercy had a bracket system that allowed you to go through the story narrative based on the different titles that you would go up against and then from there you would have you would basically have it in a way that you would uh, be able to play through these games and change the narrative of the story depending on which direction you go so that was what kind of differentiate itself from virtual all pro wrestling there so i mean in that factor there was a story angle that was there and the consistency of keeping track of who was champion was also a good play but overall virtual pro wrestling 2 had everything it was more sports centric it had you know tournament modes like like just like no mercy did but it also had it in a round robin challenge as well which was something that they would do with g1 and, and such like that so uh you know the person behind the game a developer named get uh getta uh, was a part of that and we what we wanted what most wrestling fans wanted was to get the aki engine back we wanted to get sin sophia to be a part of this game so as this presentation is playing and it's dragging his feet and normally when i watch like a youtube premiere on air and you see the timeline go down it does i don't pay no mind to it but this one it was like two minutes it felt like the longest two minutes ever because we don't <laughs> wanting to know who was going to be a part of this game was going to be interesting if you guys remember yukes left wwe uh you know a while back and the president vice president or the president of the company i believe or ceo of the company stated that they departed from the company they wanted to do something different and something that allowed them to be you know to be, it'll be a little bit more free and in my mind i and i've said this before i have this documented on uh the acmg facebook group i've said it before i think yux is going to aew I, I i truly believe it they're not saying it they can't say it they have a um you know uh, nda <laughs> that they probably have to go by a non-disclosed agreement that they probably have to go by and they can't say it but I, where else are they going to go the a company like that going on their own is cool but aew knows that these guys are assets and it was possible but it was also possible that kenny as passionate as he is he could possibly get sin sophia to be a part of it well here is the big tease of it all during the presentation, they absolutely announced, and I was right, that Ukes has officially teamed up with AEW after leaving WWE, which is huge. For, from a wrestling industry standpoint, that is huge. It's once again a downfall for WWE. It is. And if you see what I don't I don't I don't know how WWE is gonna come back. And I, maybe this is the end of the of, of the game series for I'm out there coming out with games and they're doing mobile games and all the stupid stuff, but they can't act like they can't pretend 
like this is not a loss for them. This is a huge loss for them because Ux is the only company that's doing as strong as a engine that they possibly can. But to put a cherry on top with this, as we thought that Ux was going to be there, Kenny announced something even greater to this. So he kept teasing the situation. First of all, he teased a game footage of the actual game showing, which in fact was just like these really crappy 8-bit sprites of him uh fighting uh John Moxley, which was hilarious and I knew he was he was trolling. He was trolling hard. But then he announced that Yuke was going to be a part of it, which is uh, which is a big deal and I think this is a great deal for both parties. But then he rarely teased us because also added to the development of the new console games, which will be available on all consoles, including Nintendo Switch, is No Mercy Virtual Pro Wrestling Def Jam Vendetta developer Hideyuki Iwashita, aka Geta, the man behind the Aki engine, is joining forces with Yukes in AEW to create what can possibly be the best game in years, if not ever. The one element that Yukes was missing from their engine was the Aki engine, and now they have the guy behind the damn system and engine. Do you understand what this means? The power, the power of Yukes and their creative suite, combined with the combined with um, with Aki, with the Aki engine. In the gameplay and in a reversal system. And here's the other thing. They showed game footage, but it wasn't really game footage. What they showed was a conceptual video. And I need people to understand that who's listening right now because there were a lot of people online that for some reason thought that what they saw was the actual game footage. No, that was CGI game conceptual footage of what you're gonna expect. So people, lighten up. It will it and even at the they even had a disclaimer saying that the game is not the, the what you're about to see right now is not the actual game footage will things will absolutely change as you go by and it may not even look like what you saw because what you saw was everybody juiced up in the games in the uh in, in the game footage of kenny omega versus chris jericho and and um also has Sheeta on air as well so what you basically saw is the conceptual video of what is what they're doing and what if you really paid attention to what they, you were seeing what you were seeing is the aki engine in play what you were seeing was chris jericho and and kenny omega reversing their re, like reversing their moves in the same fashion that you would see in a aki engine game such as no mercy or um or virtual all pro or wrestlemania 2000 or even def jam vendetta like that's the that's the classic system that we were seeing this is the problem with a generation of short attention span kids who don't get it they you know the people who claim to be intelligent but they don't they they don't understand what they're actually saying i i, I tell you this and i'm gonna say this now uh, and i probably said it before and i'll say it again and i'll keep saying it until i have no reason to say it social media does not it really does not hide one's intelligence it exposes it and a lot of times what you see is people pretentiously thinking that they know what they're talking about and know what they see and they react and they prejudge automatically and you constantly prejudge something that is not that does that where it has no merit of judging what they show was a conceptual video it may not even look like that guaranteed it possibly won't look like the way it did when we see it but what you needed to see out of there is that the aki engine is in effect that they're going to have this really awesome reversal system that we've all known and loved for years in in previous games that's where we're going to get out of this and i am looking very forward to seeing this but along with that but along with that there are also been uh other announcements aubrey davis who apparently used to work Oh, I'm sorry, Aubrey Davis. I keep saying Aubrey Davis. It's Aubrey Edwards, actually. Referee Aubrey Edwards. Um, no, with Aubrey, uh, I didn't realize that she actually um, was a was working with a mobile gaming developing company or a mobile developing company that developed apps and all that stuff. So Aubrey Edwards, 
basically, and it, God, I feel so bad calling her Aubrey Davis. I don't even know why I say Aubrey Davis all this time, but Aubrey Edwards, referee Aubrey Edwards, um, who also worked previously for an app company now gets to, you know, do this for the company that she works for while also doing what she loves and i think that's awesome this is the th type of things that i love seeing in aew and which is why i cannot even work alongside or support wwe because of everything that's happening right now all the turmoil that's going on involving how they treat the staff and how they treat the fans as well you know we see aew doing the polar opposite right now and i dig this but they announced two mobile games that will be in, in in the works very soon one was aew elite general manager and casino double or nothing i don't they, they we know what the general manager is going to be it's going to be a a uh, booking simulator to book matches and all this stuff I, i'm not really i when i saw that i'm not i'll probably check it out but i'm not really didn't really look that pleasing to me but you know i i'm not really that much of a mobile gamer anymore like i used to be anyway so i you know because of the obvious things that i always talk about so i'm not too excited about that the casino double or nothing game there isn't really uh they haven't really said what that was going to entail but they it's a casino theme so i'm assuming that it will be a casino game of sorts i don't know why that's going to be a thing but it is what it is but they are jump starting to a great great situation right now i couldn't be a happier wrestling fan or a gamer right now because i am extremely excited about what's to come and hopefully we'll get more footage soon hopefully we will get a release date you know in the coming months going into the year uh i there's they didn't talk about how long that they were working on this or how long it's going to be they're keeping it very quiet right now which is probably a maybe a good idea to some extent i don't know whichever way to go because you got you got this company who may be keeping things tight and not giving up too much information in the process but then you have like you know people like um mike herman and retro uh, soft games or retro soft studios that are coming out with retro mania raw uh retro mania wrestling i should say and they come out with hordes of information about the process and, and, and the programming of the game i guarantee yukes is not going to do that but it'll be interesting um i hopefully we could get this game or get more on this game probably i'm gonna say maybe i'm gonna predict next spring i think next spring is rather we're gonna get um we're gonna get news on when this is coming out or we may actually get it by next spring it's who's to say who knows because Jukes has been working on this. It, 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 I, I gotta believe Jukes has been working on this for quite some time, but they just now announced it because they got more. They they made it enough solid enough for us to know. So they had to get it to a point to be able to make an announcement on it. So you know we haven't heard from Jukes since last year, and they already had their engine set. But now they're working with uh, Geta, who's going to process this whole thing, or has probably has already been in a sense so we don't know how long it's going to be i think we're going to get an announcement of a release date probably in the spring i think the game probably won't come out till probably next year i i you know probably next and i say next year by next november not by christmas i truly believe it um it takes a while for these games to work but the fact of the matter is they have they have a foundation that they could already work on um they already have motion caps and all the stuff that i can't wait i cannot wait because you know all of the moves that we get from aew wrestlers and they're all innovative we're gonna get moves from uh, from ray phoenix ray phoenix who runs on the ropes not walk he runs on the ropes he does some of the most spectacular moves we're gonna get all that move set i can't wait and i'm so looking forward to seeing with the creative suite and i hope that they keep the same creative suite that they have with nintendo I, I really do. I really, really do hope that that's what happens. So I am looking forward to that. I can't wait to see it. Um, man, let's bring it. Bring it on. So, folks, that will do it for the news that's going on in the world of gaming. We're going to take a break. Come back. And my God, are we going to talk about Spider-Man Miles Morales? Everything about it. Is this a... This is definitely a game of the year you know, uh, contender. I'm going to just tell you that right now. But is it the game of the year? 
What does the message tell us? We'll find out all of that right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dax Xavier Josiah, the host of ACMG Presents Talk Time Live, the podcast. You want to catch up with all of our podcast shows and hear from some of the hottest names in all of anime, comics, movies, and games, such as... This is Miley Flanagan, the voice of Naruto. This is Stephanie Shea, the voice of Sailor Moon. This is Ruben Langdon, the voice of Ken Masters and Dante from Devil May Cry. Hey there, this is Kyle Abair, the voice of Ryu from Street Fighter V. This is Chris Battle, character designer of Teen Titans Go! Here's your chance to check out all of that and more on Talk Time Live. Live.com. TalkTimeLive.com provides all of our ACMG content with new and previous episodes, exclusive interviews, articles, and much more. Visit TalkTimeLive.com and let us help you learn to let go, live life, and love all things ACMG. Talk Time Live! gentlemen we are back with our final stage review and it is my review of marvel's spider-man miles morales possibly possibly the game of the year if all else it is definitely a game of the year contender i mean this thing if this is the last game that i ever play on a playstation 4 i ended that series with a bang and i, I i'm telling you now this will be the last game that I play on a PlayStation 4 because I'm not playing anything else. I'm not buying another game until I get a PlayStation 5. And by then, I'll probably all have a lot of the games ported from there. But um, if this was the last game of the year that I play, which it uh, unfortunately is not, we still got some games to go uh, before this year ends to review. I, w- I would have been very happy and proud and empowered to have played such a game like this. Um much like final fantasy 7 remake this game moved me in ways that no other game has done this year but dare i say more important than what i played in i you know final fantasy 7 remake had a message too but i think this one had a clear and distinct message especially as you go along let's get down to the the, the swing of things here no pun intended on that um the story here is Peter Parker is leaving the country for a trip with Mary Jane and Miles, who's still learning the roast, but has evolved since the last time we saw him in the previous game, is left to protect the city. He's now here. He's now given a chance to prove that he is the protector of Harlem and New York in general, uh, because Peter's no longer around to check, you know, keep an eye on things, even though the Avengers is somewhere in this city. <laughs> um, meanwhile, Miles' mother uh ria morales who is is now running for city council in order to do uh her part to not only honor the death of her husband miles's father who died in the first game but also build a better community for harlem but a new rebellious group called underground led by their leader the tinkerer is invading harlem and targeting the roxanne corporation for their new form project which is supposed to be a new energy source that is a new cleaner energy source but is it it is up to miles to find out uh to find to stop them both roxanne and underground and find out the secrets behind underground's agenda and what roxanne corporation is really doing behind the scenes so that's just basically the swing you know the just of things without even spoiling anything that's going on and trust me i will not spoil everything because there's so much going on here and there's so much to unlock um i i i beat this in a day so it's still way too early for me to talk about this thoroughly in a sense of giving away secrets or whatever like that i'm not going to do that i'm not going to disrespect i want everybody to experience what i experienced from this game so do not worry about being spoiled in here because there are some things that is going to be revealed in this game there's some things that is going to be revealed all throughout the game even at the end that you need to experience and enjoy yourself so i will not take that away from you 
Thoughts on the story? I thought the story was freaking awesome. It was tremendous. They did a tremendous job separating Miles from Peter, giving my, uh, him a chance to be his own man and his own hero and become the hero of Harlem. In fact, I can tell you this, that to, for those who were worried about whether Spider-Man was going to be a part of this game fully, I can say at least this, he will not. He will not. He He's on here from a percentage standpoint, maybe 15 to 20 15 percent at best 15 percent of the time of this game and that's a very minimal that is very minimal uh to the time that you're seeing the game um so they do a great job with this uh, they also do a great job subtly talking about current real world situations such as brutality with authorities systemic economical issues and more and of course you can't have Spider-Man without J. Jonah Jameson showing up as with his Fox News spirit and his podcast. You know, that's back as well. And I was very happy to hear that. But this time around, he has competition as a rivaling podcast by a teen named Danica is pro is providing an uh, an opposite objective uh, or should I just say an objective view of what is going on in New York. So basically what you have here is that like I said, Jay Jonah is Fox News. She is CNN <laughs> in this case. So, or everybody else but Fox News telling the, what you're really seeing and not what you're what you want them to see. And that's what Jay Jonah Jameson does. And I like that aspect. I like that you know that that uh, opposing chemistry that they have here. So you know she has her Danica cast and she's tell, talking about what's really going on and opposite of what J Jameson is saying in regards to Spider-Man and in regards to his he it's so funny he he is a big advocate of the Roxxon Corporation in this game and what we are going through right now is that there were advocates of our current president right now despite of the things that we know that they're doing wrong he's looking to look past that for whatever reason that he has and Danica is, is is reporting what you're seeing in the street what he's not seeing in the street because he's in the he you know Jameson's mindset his ideology is is high above the clouds looking down on the world whereas Danica is in the ground seeing everything that's going on and what is going on is not great there's a lot to be concerned about and she reports all of that she talks to everybody as she can she has a great following and in this case so a lot of big surprises, like I said, are revealed throughout the story mode and lots of suspense along the way. If you love what you saw on the first game, I think you will definitely love it. But in some cases, there are people, certain people that may love it even more due to the circumstances and the significance of this story. Most importantly, and I say this to the highest degree, and if you're a gamer who's played Avengers recently, you love hearing this when you finish the story mode you can replay and enjoy it all over again as insomniac games proudly provided new game plus on day one after you beat the game you get an announcement congratulating you and also announcing that you will be able to play this game once again in a bit in a higher difficulty or you could play new game plus and level up and keep everything you had from the first game and unlock other things as well how about that <laughs> take that crystal dynamics there is no excuse i knew this game was going to school the hell out of the crystal dynamics from day one it was going to expose them for everything that they were doing and make them look foolish in the hindsight if they would have done exactly what insomniac and sony has done with this game by, by just making a solid fun game that focuses on story narrative and gameplay <coughs> excuse me and not focus on trying to nickel and dime everybody by having these microtransactions and all these little events and they trust me i have i have high reason to believe that they were never going to have new game plus from the get-go they're making excuses they're trying to act like they they it was never it was going to always be a thing it should have been a thing from the get-go but the reason why i believe that they weren't ever going to do that is because plain and simple they don't make money from new game plus because new game plus allows you okay i see the frame rate in animation is insane in the ps5 that's really fast holy crap okay i see the power of the ps5 now 
<laughs> I digress. My God, that's that frame rate is insane. Um, my God, that's PC level frame rate. Oh yeah, by PC. <laughs> wow. I'm watching the Rhino mode, the Rhino fight that I played in. I don't recall it being that. That's wow. Oh wow. Uh, but I digress. They had an opportunity to make a really good game, and it, it they it just didn't come out that way. That's that's just the truth. Um, the core, and I, I'd always say the core story of Avengers is great, but not allowing us to play that story and with your intention to make us not to make sure that we don't play the series because. In all honesty, there's no, like I said, there's no money in making a game that has new game plus because it allows you to level up. It allows you to earn all of the things that you can earn without having to pay a dime. It, the leveling up was way too slow in that game. On in, in this deal, leveling up is as fast as it was before. As it, as it was last time. You level up really quick. You learn the moves really quick. You get the abilities really quick they doctored or nerfed i should say the actual you know leveling system in avengers just so it could take long enough to make it seem like okay this is taking too long i want to buy the stuff i could get because it's taking too long for me to level up they purposely did that and playing through this game absolutely exposes the understanding of what crystal dynamics was doing and they're wrong for doing it they're absolutely wrong for doing it. I do not want to keep playing a game that's going to nickel and dime me like that. And after playing this game, I don't have to. Because all of the enjoyment I should have got from playing uh, that game, I got in Miles Morales. Hell, I even got that from the last Spider-Man game. Okay? So, you know, I, I'm i sorry. They lost. They, they missed out. And they knew they were doing wrong. I feel bad for Crystal. I, I don't feel bad for Crystal Dynamics. I feel bad for Square Enix for even putting in it. I think if Crystal Dynamics, I mean, if um, Crystal Dynamics actually was not a part of Square Enix and Square Enix fully developed it the way in a Final Fantasy way, I think that game would have been awesome. And I think they should have done it that way. I, I just, it, it's just bad. Uh, I do want to also note that even in a PlayStation 4 version, the new Peter Parker is now added to that. And unfortunately, that's so sad because I just before the night before I was playing the original uh, PS4 Spider-Man and I'm sorry, the, the visual design of the original Peter Parker is just so great. And the new Peter Parker looks more like Flash Thompson to me. He just it just doesn't gel. The they say we're going to get used to it. No, we're going to have to. Or we're just going to have to... It's not a matter of us getting used to it. As a matter of fact, it's a matter of we just have to deal with it. And that's a difference. But that doesn't take away for how really great this game was. And at least they didn't change Miles' face. I don't understand they, how, why they couldn't do that with, with Parker. It, just, it, it really boggles me why they couldn't keep Parker's face. It's just crazy. Uh, let's talk about gameplay. Fans of the first Spider-Man game will feel right at home with Miles Morales. Uh, everything is exactly the same, but some new adi uh, additional abilities and, and, you know, some really well uh, welcomed abilities as well. Because this is Miles Morales. If you have read a Miles Morales comic, you know that this version of the Spider-Man has a little bit of a contrast in power. In fact, he may be even more powerful than Spider-Man due to his Venom Blast. Like, his Venom Blast and Camouflage, which allows him to, uh, you know, disappear temporarily it's really cool it's a really cool addition um but i want to also note that there's a new difficulty level in the game as well that they added which is called friendly neighborhood which is in fact an option to breeze through the game in order to enjoy the story even more this is even an easier mode than friendly which is really a basic mode this mode doesn't basically what it does is that the when you go to friendly or na friendly neighborhood the uh enemies aren't as they don't take as much energy off you when they hit you uh they're easier to take down you know in order to advance through the story better uh but if you want to if you want to be challenged more you could go to ultimate you go as far as ultimate in this game you know so you have those options as well 
but that's not me. I went for uh, fr I went for friendly. I didn't go to friendly neighborhood because I wanted to experience some part of the game, like the QTE um, modes and all the stuff. There's some modes that you only have to do QTE or the options this time around is very well detailed. They, I mean, there's so much you could do. There's so much you could do this time around, and uh, in, in terms of the um, of the options to make it accessible, and it is very accessible. It's now accessible for the. Um, for the uh vision impaired as well so i thought that was really cool that they were able to have that option as well there was a uh something a, a, a post on twitter of a um gamer who is vision impaired and was able to now see it better you know be able to enjoy the game because of what they've done for this game you know and the options that they have for people that have impairment issues like that so i thought that was pretty cool um the control scheme as you you know and love is back uh like i said now they have you know miles is equipped with the new venom blast techniques which is so awesome and also the camouflage abilities all of this that he's learning as you go by so this is a coming of age story as well for miles uh as not only he's learning more about how society works but he's also learning that his abilities is working as well and um the venom blast the Venom Blast techniques are so freaking cool. I mean, it gets to the point that he gets really, really powerful by, you know, like as, as the game progresses in here, too. Um, it's really, it's really awesome. While the control scheme is exactly how you remembered it, Insomniac Games managed to give Miles a different feel in terms of fighting style, rumble feature setup, and when, uh, when fighting, and the use of a spider sense. Because, because he's still a rookie, it gives you a different feel than you had with Peter, where Peter is extremely established and he understands how um, to use his powers and what to do. He's already, you know, mastered his abilities, whereas Miles still feels like he's still learning the ropes. And when you start off with the game, you don't successfully pull off everything as fluidly as Peter would. But as you, you know, progress through the game, you can start feeling like he's mastered more of his abilities he understands more so by the time the game ends you're fully mastered the experience so the first go around of the game you still fully like feeling like you're developing in but if you're playing new game plus you've already feel you know you already developed <laughs> that series so if you want to have that really dramatic feeling of not unknowing and growing you just play the game over again on, you know under a different setting but if you feel like you already mastered it you want to keep the master version you'd go to new game plus i'm talking to anybody who works at um crystal dynamics as well i just want to point that out that's the whole point of this of that feature so that feature that i've i've seen in a lot of games that i've reviewed in the past few weeks prior to or, or after i reviewed avengers i've played so many games that had new game plus mode instantly okay so like there's no excuse there's so no excuse for that so uh it, it's really awesome and i like the fact that it differentiates and there's a contrast between the two and you get a different experience with it as well um however uh, you know it, it, it's just awesome it's just awesome i mean just you just progress better he, he, but the swinging ability is so cool too i mean there's different swing techniques and everything as well that you get to master um he swings faster his spider sense is uh timed better and his uh fighting style is more fluid as you go along too so uh, like i said leveling up is a is as fast paced as it could be and it's just awesome here's something that i haven't talked about uh and but i get a talk chance to talk about now because of the fact and i gotta go into that site now i am i am db because they didn't reveal the cast uh until just until just yesterday because they wanted to keep it tight-lipped they didn't want to reveal it they only revealed three people and that was the um that was yuri lowenthal uh let me see hold on for one sec Go to here, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Morales. Let's go in here. So they only reveal Yuri Lowenthal and the series. Um, why is this not going? I click here. Here we go. They only yeah, they only revealed Miles Miles Morales. Uh, who is played by, give me a sec. Who's played by uh Najee uh, Jeter. 
uh, who plays Miles Morales on everything. Uh, Yuri Longthal, who reprising his role as Peter Parker once again on this um, series. Uh, but they didn't reveal everybody uh, other than, uh, I think, Troy Baker, uh, Troy Baker, who actually plays the Roxxon uh, CEO, Simon Krieger in here so that was a big surprise to have troy baker on this series as well troy is the best <laughs> it's just plain and simple and you know he needed something after the avengers debacle anyway so with that said um now they revealed all of the cast jacqueline pino played rio morales his mom fred tattishore a guy that i actually got the chance to meet in an interview on a live panel here in philadelphia played rhino i did not realize that that is so awesome <laughs> fred tattishore is the best by the way i am he is friends with me on facebook too i forgot about that but i didn't realize that he he friended me on facebook either um so that's awesome uh that doesn't mean you can follow me on facebook by the way i'm just pointing that out <laughs> I have people on there that, you know, that's why I kind of keep my thing private and not everybody's going to be able to join. So, but, um, you know, Troy Baker's in there as well. Genki Lee is on here. One of my favorite, uh, side characters is in here. So, uh, Griffin, uh, Pat Patu plays him as well. Danica, Danica, Danica Hart is also, uh, no, not Danica. That's not the one I want to focus on. Ashley Bush did her, but Jasmine saver brown playing finn mason and i won't go into it because if i go too deep on why she's significant she plays peter's friend in the series who comes back to meet you know to see her after all this time and the mom invited her for i believe christmas or thanksgiving dinner or whatever like that and they re they they re um kindle their friendship and but things get a little deep she's a big involvement in this series i will just say this she is awesome she is absolutely awesome in this game uh finn mason is the is the big focus of this game i'll just put it like that and her and jasmine saving uh savvy uh, what is this jasmine i'll just say jasmine brown uh jasmine brown performance in here is tremendous so if you haven't played this game yet i am telling you now pay attention you're going to be paying attention to uh to Finn Mason in this game a lot. Uh, there's a lot more people in here uh, in here that I will mention. If I mention too much, I will reveal too much. But um, as you know, as many of you know, because they announced it already, that uh, Prowler is in here. So Ike uh, Amandi plays uh, Aaron Davis, a.k.a. the Prowler. And I almost thought it was uh, Michael Jai White for a minute. But <laughs> the dude, he plays the role really well. I like his version of the Prowler in here. It's awesome. I won't go any more deeper on the casting than that because again doing so kind of reveals a lot <laughs> here but the performances in here overall are fantastic in here so uh they're also the side missions in this game uh this time around miles teams up with genki to help fight crime and i like how genki is a, a lot more helpful in this version because i i read I, I used to i well, i i'm not even used to i've read i've read uh Sp you know the spider-man miles morales series genki is a cool friend and, but he always comes off as um the guy who you don't want to tell secrets to because he doesn't know how to keep secrets this genki in here it was a little bit more you know team player he was more understanding of keeping secrets here and it's funny because they all you know spider-man um homecoming and um far from home there's the character Ned. And they, they always say that Ned was not based on Genki, yet he looks exactly like the character in the comics. And he plays as exactly like the character in the comics of Genki, but his name is Ned. I don't understand why they did that, but he's totally Genki. <laughs> <laughs> in the essence he's the essence of that character uh so i don't know why they keep bsing about that um but the side missions genki helps you uh help fight crime with um and help the residents in in, in the home of harlem he does this by creating an app that helps the community get in contact with them when in need so the more mile, uh, miles help the community out he earns more experience points and ability points um to help him upgrade gadgets and acquire new suits taking on side missions will also reveal new villains that you will uh that will that you will see in the game villains that you have seen in the previous game i should say as well uh some new and some returning as uh definitely you will also have missions where 
you will find boxes containing parts needed uh, that's from underground uh, that is needed for upgrading gadgets as well. There are also time capsules that you will find uh, around the city, which is very similar to Peter's book bags that you would find all around the city. And the time capsules will have memorabilia of uh, Miles and Finn's, uh, you know, friendship from the past and stuff that they hid around the city and you know, all that stuff. So. Again, Finn is a major part of the story. I'll just put it like that. The side missions may include characters um, seen in previous games as well. Like, if you guys remember in the first game, Peter uh, helped a homeless uh, uh, woman who was homeless, who was also becoming, uh, you know, who was also, you know, being harassed by a bunch of crooks that she kind of told, uh, you know, she, she, uh, she, she snitched on pretty much, but he ended up helping her. And then he also guided her to feast, which was the homeless shelter that was helping long people. Now she's back in this series, but I won't tell you as much as what she's doing now because it's awesome. Uh, so I will leave it at that, but she's back. A few other people that you've seen in the, in the previous, there's a great connection and follow up to everything that happened on the on the spider-man series which makes this absolutely a sequel and a follow-up to everything that is going on uh in the last season because there absolutely is major connections to what's happened to what happened in the last game indeed and more to come as well so um what's great about this you know you know some of um am i going too ahead of myself here um let me let me tell you about the suits then let me get to the suits um if you love the suits from the first game oh my god what i love about the suits for this is that miles has a dozen uh, new suits to unlock some you unlock through the game progression while others need activity points and parts to you know purchase what's great about these suits compared to peter's or parker's i should say is that these suits are not based on any particular time or saga uh in the comics because miles still doesn't have enough history in the comics so they had to basically develop they had to, they were able to go free reign in developing and designing new suits for miles and they did a great job some of my favorite suits were the 2099 suit uh followed by the crimson cow suit that we that they um announced online and show with the red you know kind of like the red hood type of thing it's an awesome suit i love that suit um there's also other suits as well from the animated disney uh, xd series that's out now and the into the spider-verse series that they also announced as well which you get from the pre-order along with the track suit all of these suits are great they have some phenomenal suits i do believe they're going to give us more I, I have reason to believe they're going to be giving us more i want to also note that miles is actually endorsing products in this game he is rocking an actual pair of adidas um an, an actual pair of adidas that i've seen on sale in an actual store uh, um and allegedly some timberland boots now the timberland boots don't say timberland but they're they look exactly like a pair of tims color texture suede texture and everything uh but we're supposed to assume that they are timberlands in here as well so they you know represent you know representation is definitely an effect of this game um there is another suit that he wears that i not going to mention here because i'm going to mention in in about a minute because there's some very important things that i want to talk about in reference to this game um the presentation while i felt the last spider-man game had the heart of a sam Raimi spider-man movie this game carries the essence of a Marvel uh, of a Marvel Studios production to a T. Uh, I'm talking great action, fantastic music score and soundtrack, and of course, in credit scenes. So yes, people, there's a lot to unravel in this game. So get ready. Um, everything you loved about like this really had the vibe of a Black Panther uh, movie production. Like like, it, there were some Ryan Coogler, uh, Coogler elements in this game that you can really follow and, and enjoy if you love black panther then you're gonna kind of dig what they kind of did with this because they kind of gave it they kind of gave it a hybrid of that type of vibe and other marvel studios movies vibe as well so it's almost like miles morales has been welcomed in to that atmosphere uh with open arms and he has even on the playstation 4 uh this game looks stunning and i look forward to seeing and playing this game as i'm looking at it right now on screen on the ps5 now I do, is as well as the, the the frame rate 
is the, the, the with the contrast of the frame rate in here it still takes nothing away from the ps4 game the ps4 game still i was still amazed at it and I, honestly it's only just only but so much of a difference from what i'm seeing in this game like the lighting is a little bit different i'm sure the ray tracing is a little bit it, there's there's better ray tracing in here but the look and, and, and detail and the amount of detail as far as skin texture and all the stuff is not that too far different it's just more or less lighting i mean so if like for those who are rushing to want a ps5 you don't have to rush that far because if it's it's not like having a super nintendo and then ha somebody else having a nintendo 64 you know because those are you know the 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 32 bit to a 16 bit is a big contrast is a, is a, a an obvious contrast but having a playstation 4 compared to a playstation 5 there's not that much in terms of of graphic and cosmetic in in a sense but processing power frame rate uh 4k ability yeah that's where it kicks in so it's more of a it's more of a cosmetic thing more than it is in a processor thing but it doesn't really it's not that different from what you see and and in an actual um in a playstation 4 i think you could you will absolutely enjoy this on a playstation 4 just as well as you do on a playstation 5 as you wait to get a playstation 5 so get the game on the playstation 4 and you'll still be able to play it for free on a playstation 5 i can't stress that enough again because <laughs> that's what i did and I'm, I'm i'm glad i did i am absolutely glad i did but let's talk about the most important thing about this game oh by the way i want to tell you, i want to also note that insomniac games successfully captured the spirit of both characters we love along with this uh spirit of new york with the beautiful winter setting ah oh, that was siri <laughs> um along with a beautiful winter uh setting this time around so that's what makes it contrast from the last game because last game i believe was more or less in the spring or summer this one is in the winter and i believe the timeline of this game is not so far off from the events of the last game either so that's another thing as well that you want to uh, take into consideration so they did a great job on that the message we got to talk about the message because there was a message and all through the game there was subtle messages of racial inequality social justice and empowerment in this game and it, it so, to, so to the point that i was like are they going there are they really it, i feel like they're going there but i'm not sure if they're going there there's really subtle hints of stuff like that as you progress through the game the story the story uh, you know it really kind of uh, subtly dilutes it and becomes more clear as you progress through the game so like as i'm as i'm actually experiencing this the subtlety is you know it, it starts to disappear and it becomes more obvious that when you see moments like where the rocks on security gets excited about beating on my beating on miles while there is no cameras around does that not sound familiar to you and that's one of the that was one of the first things that hit me because they, they, i feel like they made sure that you heard the rock song guard say we're gonna we, now we get to beat on beat on spider-man where there's no cameras around that hit me you know emotionally hit me right there i was like okay that had to been that had to been strategically put in there for a reason and the guard actually says great there are no cameras around we now we can see, now uh no uh, let me what did he say um they're great there's no cameras around to see what we are uh we can uh do to you almost as if they knew that he was black under that hood <laughs> <laughs> it was like a what so you know you have that then there was uh the scene where the female who is hearing impaired uh she's an artist that does murals around harlem and miles got a chance to meet her he also knows sign language so you know i think he may have something going on with that she was pretty cute too um so there is a scene where she is hearing impaired but they have a conversation with miles but he's in spider-man gear after they saved uh after he saved you know uh the event that they were in the winter event that they were in uh she tells him that in sign language that you are our spider-man 
letting him know that you are the hero in our community of Uptown Harlem. And when you say that, and when you say that, that you are our Spider-Man in, 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 in the black community, that's a code for like, yes, you're one of us that like you're, you're down with us. You're about our community. You're about helping the community that that's a that's in that context. I understood what that meant. You are our Spider-Man. You know, that's like, I, I can't stress that enough. Like Luke Cage is our hero. You know, when, when Luke Cage came out on Netflix and that series really sparked a kind of a revelation here um the idea was to make a a hero for harlem which by the way i will say this i am kind of surprised or sad that i did not see any hint of luke cage in harlem <laughs> because that's his hood that is the hero for hire in harlem so i i was really surprised that we did not see that however i get what they were doing when after a while but the most rewarding thing to happen in this game is when you complete all of the app quests in the in the side missions in that game in the city that leads you into one more job the game leads you to this mission where you go to an area in harlem and in this area there is a huge beautiful absolutely gorgeous mural with the message clear as day saying that black lives matter i'm not lying to you right now as a marvel fan as a spider-man fan whether it's peter or miles that as a marvel fan as an artist as a comic book fan that i literally stopped everything i did when I stopped in that area and saw that mural, as I am right now talking about it, I got really emotional. I, I, I literally shed a tear. No lie. Like I'm doing right now because I cannot stop looking at that. I, I took a, I took a photo in photo mode of that, which they, I think they, they designed it to, you know, for you to do because they knew that this was going to be something. They knew that this was a statement that they were making and they want to make sure that we all see it and post it on social media. And that's exactly what I did. It was the most beautiful thing I've seen in video games in my life. I'm having a hard time talking about it right now because it was just absolutely the most beautiful. I, I don't know who the artist is of that mural, but kudos to the artist of that mural. It was the statement, everything about it. And then on top of that, there's a box there for Miles that was, you know, addressed to him or Spider-Man, I should say. And he opens the box only to see that it's a special yellow and black suit known as the Uptown Pride suit, which I'm also a, uh, also calling it the Black Lives Matter suit at this point. The inner patterns is really awesome because the suit resembles kind of like the Killmonger pattern from Black Panther, along with the yellow, which was kind of like the, 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 like the cheetah pattern in the movie. Another theory also about this suit, this is the theory on the significance of the suit to me also, that the colors may also represent that of the Harlem Hero for Hire and Avenger Luke Cage because Luke Cage as you guys know his signature, his signature gear is yellow shirt black pants so that can also be a play on that as well and I'm I hope that we get some behind the scenes interviews about that as well um because I gotta say man I I was I'm as speechless almost as speechless as I am now just talking about it when I saw that and I I really I stopped playing the game probably for 15 minutes just letting it all sink in that they did this that they put this statement in there that they made us matter this to me is the most important game of the year if it, if it's not the game of the year it is damn sure the most important game of the year because this is the first game ever to support and advocate that our lives mean something in this world that we are all heroes in this world it's a big statement not only for marvel 
which it always makes big statements like this and always support everybody. It's a big statement for Insomniac Games. More importantly, it's a it's a big statement for Sony and PlayStation because this is their flagship title. This is the title that they advertise as the premier game, the marquee game to be on the PlayStation. Nothing else. And this was a statement, clear as day, that they are not tolerating any of it, that they support us. I think Sony, PlayStation, Insomniac Games, and of course Marvel for what they've done. And the kids that are able to see this game let alone, I'm like a 40 year old, you know, gamer slash comic book fan slash artist who has been busting his ass trying to matter and mean something to this world and show that I have value in this world. But now you have a new generation of kids who are playing this game and you got families and fathers and mothers who are now buying these PlayStation 5s or even this game and get to enjoy this and really get to see that the kids get to see that for the first time ever. This is not only our Spider-Man, this is our game. And everybody can enjoy it, but it's ours. And I can't thank them enough for that. I absolutely can't thank them enough for that. And another thing that really made it evident that this, there were, the, I mean, if that didn't tell you what the message of this game was about, the end also did as well. And um, near the story near the end, Miles and Peter are talking about P Miles is talking to Peter, I should say, about how the higher stratifications, you know, the people within the higher stratification don't value those in, a, in, in his community and that he now has a greater purpose to protect his community in Harlem. And Spider-Man, you know, supports him all, all the way because it's Peter Parker, for God's sake. Like, even if Miles wasn't around, we knew Peter had our back. <laughs> you know, because he was always considered the everyman of of the game, you know, of the of the comic book series. Uh, you know, that's what he's always been. He's he's fought against um, racism before. You know, we've seen panels and stuff like that before. Where he's fought against racism and it's been all about, you know, equality and stuff like that. But now we got Miles who he's, you know, helping to be the hero for us. You can't have a better if this is not America, an example of America. I don't know what is people. Overall, Spider-Man Miles Morales is the flagship game for the PlayStation 5. I can't stress that enough without question. Great story, fantastic characters and performances, an outstanding antagonist and the Tinkerer, and overall narrative and story progression with a strong follow-up on characters from the last game. This game's theme and message is not only a marquee title of uh, the marquee title, for the PlayStation 5, this is also the statement narrated by both Sony and Marvel that black people, people of color, and any creed or gender can be a hero too with no restrictions. This is for, this for me, did uh, <laughs> the significance of the story and message made. This is, you know, this top the last game, you know, as much as I love the last Spider-Man game, significantly this topped it for me just on that message alone and these times like myself and especially our youth needing this type of representation like this and marvel continuing to create these type of representations for not only people of color but people of gender and and uh, in orientations or whatnot they and and, and creeds you know you got kamala you know um I was about to say Kamala Harris, but you got Kamala Khan as Miss Marvel as well, who's become another great character in the Marvel Universe, uh, who represents the um, Islamic community, uh, you know, in the Muslim community, not the Islamic community, the Muslim community, I should say. Um, it, it, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. It, it really breaking down the walls and barriers that has been up for four years and longer. And I'm happy to see that, it, you know, this is the start of the new generation of gaming. This is awesome. So if you want to play this game, but you're an Xbox fan, you it's worth going out of your way to, get, to find it. Absolutely. Whether this is the best game of the year, it may be irrelevant. However, like I said, this is the most important and rewarding game of the year for me and people like me. And for that, the grade that I give 
should be a no-brainer. This game gets an A+, without a doubt. So, there you have it, folks. That is my review of Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Go out of your way, check it out, and enjoy every bit of it. That'll do it for this episode of Select Start. Folks, thank you very much for joining me. Again, we were supposed to be doing uh, No More Heroes, but you see uh, you understand why this had to that had to be postponed so uh that will be done next week and then the following week uh, we this is countdown to calamity so uh hyrule hero hyrule warriors age of calamity comes out next week on a friday the 20th it's already downloaded on my switch now for pre-order and it's ready to go so i won't be reviewing it next week it'll be reviewed the week after no more heroes will be next week because you know it'll be the first time i've ever played that game ever and i get to talk about that uh the following week i'll be talking about no more heroes 2 and we'll see from there um now this is the time of the year where things start to slow down for me because of holiday season even though it is covid and all this stuff uh it will be interesting to see if i'll be doing the main show and what i'll be covering because this depends on what's available and then also um whether i'll be doing stuff with my wife we won't be traveling this year due to covid unfortunately but i'm sure we'll find things that we'll be doing in-house you know just to celebrate the um times and we all can use a break as well so stay tuned but there will be at least one episode of whatever or two at best of whatever so um as to whether there will be a show this week we will find out for sure but i don't know we'll keep that in mind so stay tuned for that if not you still have a lot of content to listen to if you're a new listener you can check you know our backlog of stuff we have over 400 episodes of this show on here for you know doing game reviews of things that you may be interested in or interviews that you might be interested in with some of the finest in all of anime comics movies and games you can check us out subscribe and download on spotify iHeartRadio. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Podbean, and of course, TalkTimeLive.com as well, where you can easily find our past previous episodes, as well as our exclusive interviews with all of the people uh, in the world of anime, actors, game developers, uh, art, comic book artists, you name it. I've had a chance to, and the honor of talking to these people. You could go to TalkTimeLive.com and go to the exclusives page in there. You can click on that tab. It'll take you right there. You can see the Naruto uh, Q&A that I've done. You could, you know, t- my exclusive interviews with Naruto and Amanda, uh, you know, Molly Flanagan and Amanda C. Miller as well. I, I almost damn near interviewed everybody from the cast in there, like literally. <laughs> the entire cast of Naruto I've interviewed is <laughs> mul- some multiple times. Um, you know, Dante, you know, Ruben Langdon, Dante from Devil May Cry and Ken Masters on Street Fighter. He's in there as well. Um, Bob Camp, the, you know, co-creator of Ren and Stimpy, like TC Carson, the original voice of Kratos are all there on TalkTimeLive.com. You can check it out easily there and listen to those episodes and everything and anything anime comics movies and games there so folks check us out keep supporting us and thank you for taking your time to listen to this episode so that'll do it on behalf of myself all i gotta say is learn to let go live life and love all things anime comics movies and games this is acmg presents talk time live i am out there take care and have a great week and be safe out there this covid's still around stay safe Music for this episode is provided by Game Chops. Check out these great chiptune tracks and more at music.gamechops.com.